see maybe if I can use it for the unplug drill. Okay, um, so queen given hearts. That's the way that reads. This reads probability of queen given a heart. That's what little the little vertical line there means given. And this is known as a conditional probability. So if you go back and you look in the reading that was associated with this, they talk about conditional probability. And basically, it's the probability that the uh, of the first event, the thing that's listed first, given that the second has already happened. So this is in order. So uh, I'm going to first event listed. That's the second event listed. So the thing that comes second is actually what's happened already. The thing that comes first is what you're asking the probability. So this thing, probability of a queen given hearts, means that um, I know it's a heart. What are the chances of the queen? So the probability of a queen given a heart is one out of 13, whereas the probability of queen and a heart is asking a different question. It's saying, I'm using the whole deck. What's the probability of getting both? Whereas this is saying, I'm already telling you it's a heart. Either I've separated the hearts out, or I'm just telling you, I'm looking at the card right now. It's a heart. What are the chances of the queen? Um, so it's just a different way to describe a certain probability. You're still essentially doing the same thing. You're figuring out what the sample space is, how many things are there, and then how many chances to get that first thing exist within that sample space. Um, and I'm going to do kind of a little example from the stuff we did yesterday, which would be a little bit of review for most of you, because I think most of you were here yesterday. Um, okay. Um, all right. Um, all right. So this is our situation the other day. We got two blue marble, blue marbles and three red marbles in the back. And so the probability of pulling a red marble out is just three fifths because it's three out of five. Probability of pulling a blue marble out, assuming the bag is still full, which is that doesn't tell me the bag's not still full, is two fifths. Okay. Just putting things out, putting them back in. Uh, if I do these two in a row with replacement, these are what are called independent events. The, me pulling a, a red out of the bag and then pulling a blue out of the bag, it doesn't matter as long as I put the marbles back in the bag after each hit. So the probability of red then blue is just, well, it's three-fifths times two-fifths. There's six twenty-fifths because the sample space for that, of two of those in a row, is actually there's 25 things that can happen, and six of them are red first. Blue second. The other thing we talked about the other day is, well, what if I don't put the marble back in the bag? This is called without replacement. And the reason it's important to know the difference is sometimes they won't say I'm putting it back in the bag. They'll just say, uh, with replacement, I'm putting it back in the bag. Or without replacement, I'm not putting it back in the bag. Or whatever happens. So this one changes things a little bit. First thing, still three fifths of getting a red. The second one, though, if I hold that other marble out, the chance of getting a blue is only two fourths. So when I multiply those together to figure out the overall probability, I have a slightly different probability. It's more likely to happen because if I hold that, back that red marble that I maybe got, there's only the 50% chance of getting a blue once that red marble is, is taken out of the bag. Um, and then this last example was what's the chance of getting blue then blue without replacement? Two fifths to get the first blue, but since one of the blues has been removed, then there's only one fourth chance of getting that other one. So this is very unlikely to happen. And so once again, when we do it without replacement, these are called uh, dependent events because the second event depends on what happens in the first one. So it's the two name, whereas red and blue with replacement, they're independent. It's just as likely for me to pull a blue as a red every time I pull a marble out, as long as I'm always putting the marbles back in. Uh, now, the reason I bring this up is this one right here is very similar to number four here, okay? So red's the first event. This says red has already definitely happened. So it's simply saying, what is the probability of blue if red has definitely already happened? So this is the first event. It's already happened. What's the probability of blue? And so it's just, oh, it's not two-fifths because we're doing it uh, without replacement. We're keeping it out of the bag. It's just already happened. So the chance of me getting a blue is two-fourths because this when it's written this way, this is saying red has already happened. You don't have to worry about if it happened or not. Uh, what's a little interesting, if you look at number three, this one comes out the same way. Because when I do it with replacement, it doesn't matter if red has happened yet or not. Because I put the marble back in the back, so the, the blue is still two-thirds. It doesn't matter 
that red has definitely happened is if I'm doing this experiment with replacement. So that's why it's also important to know, like, am I doing it with replacement or not? Because it'll change what your conditional probability is. And once again, this is called conditional probability because it depends on the new condition created by the fact that this second thing listed has already happened. Um, okay. Um, I think I have. All right. Uh, so there were some problems in the book, which I did in my first two classes this morning. And I realized one of them I kind of didn't like, so I rewrote it. And it'll come up uh, in a minute because I'm going to have you do a short uh, practice quiz as well. So I just want to go over it. And then if anybody has any questions about any of the other problems, they can. Um, the other thing I want to mention is I think most of you probably have read my email and maybe even have checked Aries. Um, I kind of put temporary grades based on how much you've been showing up. A lot of people who are showing up right now got an A. Some of you probably have a B or a C, and that's simply an indication that maybe you haven't done everything. Doesn't mean you're going to get a B or a C. It just means uh, that's what I kind of would grade you on. And the reason I did that is I had a lot of parents kind of asking, how is my student doing? And some students aren't doing anything. So some people were really shocked when they went out and looked at the grade book and got a, a B or an F. So if you're really concerned about, like, what am I missing, email me and I'll tell you. But really, if you got an A, B, or a C, you're doing the work. It's just the people who got A's, like, they've done, like, everything. They haven't missed a class. They haven't missed a quiz. They haven't missed anything. Whereas a B and a C is like, oh, you missed a class or something like that. And if you're really concerned about it, email me and I'll tell you what it is and we, we can fix it. But that, it's just a, it's not even a real grade. It's just something I was trying to help parents understand uh, who's showing up and who's not showing up. Um, okay, so this is very similar to what's in the book. So Jada rolls one standard number cube, which is what I call dice. I don't know why they call them this. Um, once again, I think it's some weird cultural thing. Um, and then she also flips a coin. This is a little different than the end of the book, and I think it's a better problem. So the probability that she rolls a five and flips a tail, because this is heads or tails, we're talking a coin, and the number cube is a dice, so it's one to six. So the probability she rolls a five is one in six, and the probability that she flips a tail is one half. So the probability of that whole thing happening is one twelfth. That's the possibility that could happen. And if I can't figure this out, I could list out all the possibilities. There'd be 12 things in the sample space, but only one of them would be 5t. Um, okay, what's the probability that a, uh, oh, and so this asks probability of a five, and this is our symbol for and t. That's the way that would be written shorthand. This next one, the what this asks for shorthand, and I might be breaking up my connections unstable. Um, probability that the flip is an H under the condition that, or given that, the first roll is at three. So this is saying three has already happened. What's the chance that it uh, heads will happen? In this case, it doesn't matter. These things aren't related. If they were somehow related, I might have to recalculate the sample space. These are not even, they're independent events. So the probability is just one half. And then the next question asks, what's the probability of heads under the condition that a, uh, a one is rolled first? Well, probability that a head, given that a one has been rolled first, once again, this one does not affect this H. If it did affect the H, like if it was hearts here and this was queen, I might need to think about, well, what's the probability? But it's still just one half. Um, probability that's not a four. So the way that would be written is probability not four. And not a four, well, there's five things. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, five or six could happen. So the probability is five out of six. And then finally, what's the probability that the roll is not a four and the flip is a tail? Okay, so this would be written uh, not a four and a tail, sorry. Um, so that's going to be five, six times one half or five. Okay. Um, hold on. Sorry, we had him on my a leash. He goes a little crazy when people come by. 
Um, okay, the other problem, and then I'm going to let you go here. The other problem is actually in the book. Um, hey, it says there are four slices of pizza to choose from. Each slice has one topping. Three of them have sausage. A fourth has pepperoni as a topping. Karan randomly selects one slice, then my selects another. What's the probability that my selects a slice of pepperoni under the condition that Karan selects a slice of pepper, uh, sausage pizza? Now, this is a lot of words. This could be written much simpler. This is what I want to point out. A quick way to write, assuming we understand what the um, assuming we understand the whole situation about what the pizza is. So I got one, two, three, four slices. Three of them are sausage, and four, one is pepperoni. And so we are asking the probability that my, who went second, um, gets pepperoni, given that. Quran already got a slice of sausage. That would be the quick way to write those last two sentences. And so if Quran got a sausage, we've got one less sausage out here because we're saying this definitely happened, then the probability is just, uh, let's see, we're looking for pepperoni, right? One out of three because the sample space is two. And that's what this thing does. This thing that the given thing just says, okay, you need to reconsider what your sample space is because something else has happened. All right, um, I am going to give you a practice quiz link. Um, this is probably going to take you about 15 minutes to do. I'm going to post it in Google Classroom here in a few minutes. So if you don't if have you, like 15 minutes now, I would wait and not do it now. Um, if um, I got to find it, oh, I've got it back in my. If uh, and then once once it's up and running, assuming you've got time to do it right now. And um, you can uh, stay online if you want to ask me questions, or you can leave, or I'll turn the uh, waiting room off. So if you leave and then decide you have a question, you can come back and ask me a question, which actually happened a couple of times last class. Um, the one thing I will suggest is if you happen to, um, if you happen to uh, ask me a question, uh, either because you left or you're still here, you probably need to unmute and say something to me because I'll likely be doing something else. I won't be looking at the chat window here. So if you're sending me chats and I'm ignoring you, it's because I'm not looking at the chat window. You're going to have to unmute to get my attention. Um, okay, let me just, before anybody takes off, a couple of you, you can try this to make sure it works. But um, I think Ann Lisa, Elmer, and I all just showed up. Did anybody else show up kind of after we did the breakout rooms? I think I've got everybody else. Anybody else kind of show up late? Okay, so I really appreciate you all coming. Um, as far as I know, there's no teaching going on tomorrow, so have a nice three-day weekend. And then please try to check back in on Monday because we're going to start doing something new to prep you for Algebra 2 for next year and do a little bit of end-of-year geometry review. Okay. Um, can somebody verify that that link works? Okay, great. So if you want to stick around, you can stick around and ask me questions. If you want to leave and then if you change your mind, you can come back. I'll be here for the next half hour or so. But uh, take a look at that. I think we've ironed out all of the typos. So please, please, if you get stuff wrong, please read the explanations that come with the right and wrong answers because it'll actually help you figure out, oh, this is why I got this wrong. Either I didn't understand the question or it explains the concept. Maybe you don't. Take advantage of the fact that I've written out all the, the, the feedback for the right and wrong answers. All right, so thanks a lot. If you want to stick around, that's great. Otherwise, have a wonderful weekend. Thanks, Mr. Okay. Chair. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay, you too. Bye, Mr. Taylor. Bye.